Uh, let's talk about the lady frog for a second here. Now, uh, Courtney, obviously you're a guest here, and you don't know um, all of our histories here, but a member mm. of this podcast has a unnatural and very bizarre fear of frogs for some reason. It's Christian, a, it's a it's a it's a phobia. It's a phobia. I, I it's a legitimate phobia. I've had it uh, forever. Um, uh, like it could be the smallest frog, and I'm running the other way every time because they are creepy to me. Like the eyes, the eyes are too big. <laughs> their cheeks inflate too much. <laughs> their tongues are too long. They jump too high, and their sound, the sound they make, is unnerving. Right? Like everything about them is creepy. Um, oh. Yeah. So this episode must episode must have been a nightmare for you. Like, some people hate spiders, but you have a frog with its big eyes. And then at one point, she even gets down and, like, jumps around like yeah. a frog. So this is actually where Star Wars actually did a fantastic job. Star Wars created the first and the last frog I will ever, ever be sympathetic to. Because she has such human qualities qualities yeah. emotions and characteristics like she was a mom she's like this a lot of the time like oh i'm you know i'm worried about my eggs you know like this and when she was passed out like on the floor like uh like dad i was like oh no not the frog mother <laughs> i'm like and then i was like what am i saying <laughs> kill the frog kill the frog yeah uh, but i was like i'm so conflicted no um they uh, so and this is this is this is the strength of star wars uh clearly they make they make these these puppets uh, and in their mannerisms and their eyebrows and, you know, just, you know, just facial their, features, their facial features yeah. and like their movements. And they make them so they, they can portray like a lot of human emotions. So it, it's true. Even though I have like uh, this like phobia of frogs, she was, like I said, the first and the last sympath, <laughs> the first and last sympathetic frog I will ever see ever again. So. Good job, Star Wars. Until until episode three, when you see her husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and let's uh, and let's jump there real quick because I think everyone um, said at the beginning. Courtney, you also said, you know, this episode is clearly not is potentially not a filler. This frog lady has a <laughs> clearly a special place in Christian's heart, but um, clearly he's going to play a potenti- potentially a, a potential bigger role in this season. Um, one of our notes in here is, you know, is she actually telling the truth about her husband seeing other Mandalorians? We know that, you know, the kind of the, the run through here is the Mandalorian uh, needs to find another Mandalorian, other Mandalorians in order to complete his, his whole thing. Um, Courtney, where do you do you have a theory in terms of where this could potentially go with, you know, Christian's favorite friend of all time? <laughs> Um, I don't think that she's like a huge character. I think she was kind of just, um, a plot device to get the Mandalorian off of Tatooine to get him to where the other Mandalorians could be. I don't think she has like this deep, you know, backstory or more important than what we saw in this episode, but I could be wrong, but I just think that she, like I said, she was just a means to an end to get him off. The island. Off the island. Yes. Off the island. There we go. Uh, I. Off planet. And I think that that she was just a a way to get. So my gut gut instinct is you're totally right. Like her purpose is what it is. The only thing, the only element that makes me think she might be a, a bit bigger of a role than she, you know, we think she might be is her ability to, she clearly has some technical expertise here. She, she um, took that droid and turned on his voice, uh, his voice to basically translate her to the Mandalorian. So I just wonder. That's like a very useful skill. So I wonder if that's going to pop up again. Right. I don't know. In the Star Wars universe, that was another thing we talked about earlier today. In the Star Wars universe, everyone has all this technology everywhere. So it's not like totally weird for her to be able to kind of manipulate that stuff. Hotwire yeah. a droid, Absolutely. I guess. Like you know because. Technology and all this stuff is so ingrained in all yeah. of them. It's not the craziest thing that she would know how to do it. And they had to find a way for her to communicate with him somehow, right? Yeah, yeah. I just thought it was, a, it was an interesting choice that they chose that droid and they chose you know, her to do that. Um, like, you're totally right. Technology is everywhere. And everyone seems to have some kind of technical proficiency in something, right? Because you have to. That's just the world that we live in. Or that they live in, sorry. Um, uh, yeah, I just wonder. It's like... is. Maybe if that droid is coming back, maybe she's the one to bring him back. Maybe. No, but it's it's super simple, right? The first season, 
built the Avengers roster oh, God. through the season. <laughs> oh, and then no. the Avengers United at the end uh, to take down the big, bad, evil man, Moff yeah. Gideon. And that's what they're doing this season. They just you have another friend, yeah. this cute froggy lady who she's can be part of the Avengers, in, and she's gonna die just she's, like Quill. Or because she's they like kill all the aliens. Or she's the Doctor Strange of the universe, she or the be. Black Panther. Like you know, the next generation <laughs> of Avengers for she's part. She's part of the Secret Avengers, is what you're you're trying. Oh, ooh. Yeah, she's credited as Frog Lady. I don't think it's really. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. But that sounds hilarious. <laughs> like, like you've got, you've got, yeah. You know, obviously, rest in peace, Quill. But you've got Cara Dune, Mandalorian, Grief Cargo, Frog Lady. Cargo is Carga. The Child Carga. Sorry, Carga. <laughs> cargo. No. Grief Cargo. No. Sorry. I'm sorry, Grief. I'm sorry. 